What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Thursday edition of Back Your Play with Q. I'm your host, Rich Quinones. As always, we are brought to you by our wonderful friends over at Play It Again Sports. We know the holidays, they pass Christmas, New Year's right around the corner, but still, everyone's trying to get sports equipment and gear. If you stop in right now, bring in some slightly used sports equipment, baseball, hockey, football, lacrosse, golf, even free weights, they'll give you cash all the way through January. If you mention it, you heard it right here on BYP with Q. 30% more in store credit, convenient hours. Check them out online, playedagainsports.com. Put them in the location, New Jersey. A lot more specials coming up as well. So keep it locked into BYP. The prop kind enough to join us. And um, hopefully he got through the holidays unscathed. I see the Jarrett Goff hanging around MVP jersey in the back. He's got the bird's hat. And by the way, <laughs> the Cutlets era has ended. Here's the funny thing about this. As much as... You you like these stories and whatnot. There's always a avenue to make some money and to be profitable with some of these games. And we saw it the last couple of weeks. I mean, albeit the Giants hung around that game Sunday, but you called the Saints game, you called the Pats game a couple of weeks ago. You've been on fire, some good college hits. So as we are getting in the crunch time in the NFL with a Thursday night affair tonight, the Jets and Cleveland. Uh, we can start there. We can uh, get into some of these games. Um, I do want to ask you off the bat, though, uh, right now uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles and that slop that we saw on Monday against the New York Giants, um, cause for concerns now with this Eagles team uh, going forward? I, I don't know. I actually went to the game. <laughs> I haven't been to a game in years. And uh Somebody felt the need to get me that as a Christmas present, so I was. I think I would have rather had a bag of coal, but I was glad to. I was glad to go. I mean, I went. It was a night. It was uh, a nice day. It wasn't that cold. It, uh, it's actually kind of cool to go on a weird day, like you know. Yeah. Christmas. You, you know? Yeah. You, yeah. And, yeah. a lot of people, and you know, it makes you think about you know. Thanksgiving's the adult holiday, you know, Christmas is the kid's holiday. Right. And you can kind of tell with everybody there, but yeah, people dressed up uh, uh, in, uh, in Santa Claus suits that were in green. I just, I forgot how much fun it was to just go to a game and just sit back and, and watch it. Uh, I didn't stress too much. I had a, I had a, a decent first half play, uh, I think I had placed it on Twitter. I shared it to whoever had asked. And it was also part of the charity. Nice. Bowl tap. Uh, I had four first hits. I split. Uh, and that, the, the Eagles was the was the last one. Uh, so it worked out kind of kind of well because it's a, it was, it's a weird quirk where I kind of like the Giants in the game. That, but I really like the Eagles first half. I had, a, 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 it, it's not exact. It wasn't, contra, it doesn't contradict the way you think it would. Like, well, how can you like that? Because you got a team that's getting, you know, two touchdowns plus. And then the first half opened about six and a half and at seven, went to seven and a half. So I had, uh, I was ahead of the line movement. Uh, and then I actually had a little bit on the money line as well. Uh because it's kind of like what we spoke about a, a, a month, six weeks ago, you get kind of uh, get some of these teams that they should win. Right. The game. You know, uh, you, get, you hear a lot of this narrative in the media. Oh, that team should win. They're laying a lot. And what's happened in the last like 35, 40 years, it's actually pretty good, uh, pretty good sample size. A lot of these, a lot of the teams, uh, that are in the Eagles position, meaning like good playoff teams, your top two, three, four seeds playing against teams that aren't going out trying to play spoiler. Uh, it's about coin flip if they cover, you know, it's basically you're flipping a coin. But first halves, the, the better team late in the year yeah. has come out and played. Now, here's the quirk, and it doesn't fit perfectly this year the way it has years past. There's no dominant team. The parity has kind of squeezed everybody down where you don't have, uh, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, you don't have really, really bad, bad teams. I thought Carolina was bad, bad, bad. You almost have to want to wait until it's a situation. You could uh, uh, say, listen, Carolina is bad. Okay, 
I agree. But they're competitive bad, <laughs> hanging around bad. Yeah, well, the problem with Carolina is that they, they it, I mean, there's a lot of problems, but right. the main thing is they don't score. Right. You know, so, but in years past, you, you might have three teams like that. Yeah. Two or three teams. And then you'd have a team that's whose head and shoulders above everybody else. And then you have a couple tiers of really good. You know, you might have three or four teams. And you can go all the way back to the Montana years. Uh, and you'll have kind of the league will look very much the same. You have a lot in the middle. You have elite, a percentage of elite. I'm not even going to say 10%, but it's, a, it's pretend it's 10%, 10% on the bottom. And, the, and then you have a lot of flawed in the middle. Yeah. And then you can create where it becomes tricky is you have to create your own metrics and uh, people smarter than me and dumber than me create their own things, say, okay, here's what I'm going to use, EPA, and, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is, scoring, uh, uh, yards per pick, whatever it is that, that you create to say, Mike, this team is good, this team is bad. That's where uh, it becomes unique to, to the individual. But I don't think no matter what metrics you use, Carolina is bad no matter what metric you use. Sure. You, you know, so it's almost like, in years past, I've said, well, I don't want to play on them unless it's like a perfect scenario. Uh, conversely, I don't want to play against, you know, Aikman's Cowboys if I don't have to. There's no real reason. And I used to run to people, oh, yeah, that, you know, they're laying too many. Get away from those teams. Get, let's get involved in the flawed teams. Like we had three weeks ago, Green Bay was too flawed to be laying six against the Giants. The Giants were not bad. That not at, They were not as bad. As you know, Carolina, they're yeah. uh, you know, the Giants are flawed, but they showed you when you know, when they got absolutely destroyed against Dallas, you know, now all of a sudden they were laying 10 in Washington and went yep. to nine yep. and they win the whole game. And it shows you that, um, uh, you know, there's so much parity in the league, but it's all concentrated in the middle. And then what happened, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, what was it, after that, Green Bay loses again, right? Green Bay loss, Patriots, and then, yeah, the Steelers. And then, and then ironically, in a situation with Carolina, who'd win? And I mentioned it on your show. I said, I actually like Carolina. It was two weeks ago. I said, yep. like, I can believe it or not, this is too much for Carolina. And Carolina ends up uh, playing a, 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 a good game. Uh, now, to, to bring things full circle, I think Green Bay will win this week <laughs> because they're dressed up as a dog against an equally flawed team. Yeah. Now you're not getting you're not getting a, 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 which a, a, the mother though would be if they were getting more than three, uh, or, or you're only getting two. But I like them to win the whole game. If you want to put them in teasers, uh, I think it's a game that you get now. Minnesota's entire thinking. season. Minnesota's entire season uh, was last week. Uh, they knew it. You know it. I know it. The coach knows it. Every day. They had to win that game last week against Detroit. Uh, I like Detroit. Uh, I, that was one of the – also the first yep. first plays I had. Uh, and I don't want to say it's a letdown. I hate that narrative. But it's a good situation for Green Bay to go in and win – uh, you get a couple points, but I think they're at least as equal to the Vikings, if not a little bit better. Uh, so that's and I I don't know that's supposed to be the night game. Huh? Are they going to flex it that? Is. It's not. I mean, right now it's an NBC game. I mean, what are you flexing it with? Steelers, Seahawks? No. Well, you know what they should flex it with? Dolphins and Ravens. That's a one o'clock game. Well, here's the problem I think they have that I'm, I mean, I could look it up because I'm not completely privy to it. And, uh, is, you know, some of the networks want certain games. Of course. You, you, know, of course. you can't right. have this game. So whoever has the Miami Boulder you're game, allowed, like, Yeah, you're allowed X amount to give up. Events. Correct. Yeah. So you Correct. can pull from this. One. But, you know, the Saints Bucks, I think would be a good game to flex if, if it's, Available, but again, they might say, ah, and make, no. and make that 425, make Miami and Baltimore 425 window on CBS instead of um, Bengals and Chiefs, eh, Chargers Bengals and Denver. Chiefs. 
Bengals Chiefs, I wouldn't mind flexing that either. But yeah, you, you do have. But remember, too, you're only allowed to play X amount of games in prime time, X amount of games at night. I mean, yeah. Denver, every time you turned around, Denver was playing like a Thursday night, Sunday night, and Monday night. Well, you, you want to segue into that, I uh, guess. I mean, uh, I just read a couple things this morning and uh, about, you know, it's a money decision. And listen, we all know his contract was insane. Uh, Broncos, it's almost like making a bet. And then trying to play in game, it's almost like playing like a three touchdown favorite in college, and you're trying to play in game. The team, your team's down fourteen nothing. Right, no matter right. what you do, it's bad, you know. And that's the kind of the Broncos. It's it's bad. They made a horrible contract, and they're trying to do everything they can to get, get out of it. They gave him apparently they gave him an injury clause. Yep. Uh, that benefits him. Yeah. If he got hurt, he's guaranteed X amount of money. So. But, you know, him and his agent, remember, that is, it, it is set up good for you, but you also leave yourself open where the team can see you. I think they did it, if I'm not mistaken, they did it to RG3 before. And back then, I think, I was like, why are they sitting RG3? And I remember I didn't read anything about it. I said, man, he must really be hurt. And they sat him because they didn't want him to get hurt because then his claws would have kicked in. So, a lot. Uh, listen, the Broncos really want to wrestle else. There was no reason to, to think that it he would go and hack it. At, was it was a quarterback guy? But this is also why it's good to question everything and be very cynical about everything. Like if I ran any of these teams, if I was in a position of power, I would just be like, listen, uh, no. <laughs> and you know who has a lot of no's in his vocabulary is Howie Roseman. Yeah. You know, going going all the way back to where he's wrong, where he, he let Brian Dawkins go and, and he had three more good years in Denver. Denver. But he's been right more than he's wrong. Remember, he released Brian Mitchell. People are like, oh, Brian Mitchell. Brian Mitchell was done. But Roseman Jordan had this Brown, thing. Brown, Leo people. Shepard. Yep. yep. Yeah, he said once these guys hit 30, 31, yeah. if I don't see something unbelievable. And even then, he, sh he was just like, I think he has a chart on his desk. He's 30 years old. Get rid of him. And a lot of fans are like, oh, that's too harsh. But the fans are, fans are nostalgic. You have to do this without any uh, passion. It was, a bad, it, was a bad, it was a bad trade and bad move. I mean, listen, Seattle fleeced Denver at the end of the day. And I think Denver is doing – and I'm not a big Russ fan. I thought he was cooked last year. Um, he's marinating right now. He's probably going to be microwave next season if he latches on with a team. I think that kind of did him dirty. I never liked the Sean Payton fit. Sean Payton wants that pure pocket passer. You're not getting the breezes anymore. It's not the way the NFL is designed. Now Russell okay. Wilson at 36 has to go to another team. What are they going to do? Cater their offense around him? Or he's going to have to adapt to their style of play in their offense. So, I, Well, I didn't think I didn't think you'd be elite, but you got to look around the league. He hasn't played poorly. I thought he'd be okay. And, and if you're serviceable and you, and you have a decent team around you, you know, you've been taking the regular season and it, it, you're, you're not going to get, I mean, if you're going to try to get Mahomes, you know, I, I remember even back then, you know, the Chiefs had Alex oh, Smith. Good. I think they were one year off. They blew that 20 to nothing lead against, uh, I think, Tennessee. Mariota came back. Uh, they were up big in that, in the, in the, in the wild card game. And I remember thinking, uh, uh, Man, they must see something in Mahomes. Everybody else didn't see. Well, it turns out you know, a lot of people saw him, and that's where and a lot Matt of could do one at the Giants. Game. One at the Giants to draft Mahomes. Yes, and, and they saw. Uh, I think the knock on him was, you know, he's going to throw a lot of interceptions. He's going to take a lot of chances, and blah blah blah. Who cares? He had a big arm, and he's young. And now look, and and, and he blew up. Uh, so, but my point about that is it. Outside of that, I mean, that's really putting a stretch into, you know, putting your team, oh, go find that, that guy. Go find, well, all right, what else can I do? Well, the easier thing seems to be find a guy that's not going to kill you. Right. And build a line, build a defense, give them receivers, and then see what happens. Uh, I, I look back when this conversation came up off air about Jared Goff, you know, when they, they traded Goff for Stafford. Everybody thought, oh, Goff's done. 
He's done. Wentz and Goff, they're done. Uh, when you look back at Goff's numbers, you know, Goff had the Super Bowl year. Obviously, he was good. All people remember is the Super Bowl. I don't know why. No I, offense. The guy played well. I mean, I told you, you know, uh, Russo in the show, he was like, oh, I want to see Goff win, a, win a, game, a big game on the road. I'm like, the guy went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> he won a game in New Orleans when he won the two. But, uh, you know, and then a lot of people say, oh, well, it's because of McVay. I don't tend to give coaches – to you know that much credit, uh, uh, unless you have a, a a a system completely set up like the way uh, what's the name in San Francisco and has the mm-hmm. same frame, where uh, but outside of that, uh, you uh, 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 what's his name? I thought Wilson was going to be serviceable. That's yeah. the point. Uh, yeah, no, same I, here. Same here. Thought he was going to be serviceable. I didn't think he was going to kill. But he went. I mean, he he he, he went. The bottom dropped out of him, and, and he's he's awful. And, it, and I think you can't go wrong by saying, you know, all right, if the guy's 35, he's not going to be my main guy. You can't put your eggs in that basket, and the Broncos are pretty much teaching the entire league. Now, Flacco's making everybody think differently. They're like, wait a minute. The guy's on his couch. Look what he's doing. But if you look at some of the games and look at some of the replays that Browns, you know what he's doing. He's got he's – got, uh, the, the Browns have a good line. Yep. Good they receivers, have tight ends. Good receivers. And he's they're letting him do what he did, which got him in trouble sometimes. It's just throw the ball. In Baltimore. Uh it won him a Super Bowl. I yep. mean, what did he do? Remember he beat Denver? Just with throw a, it. That's it. With a you know, then Baltimore should have never even won well, that. He game. tipped it. He played, he played the DB, uh misjudged oh, it I, late. What a, what a mistake. I, I mean uh, 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 it's funny because people don't remember stuff like that. Oh, Manning lost. Manning didn't lose that game. That game was close. It went like it, this. It, yeah. man, come on. So, but that's who Flacco is. And I remember there was a game the year after the Super Bowl. Uh, they went in New England in, in the in the divisional matchup and were beating the piss out of New England. And New England came back, and then Flacco on the last drive, they're driving, and he he go he went for home, he went for on oh, first down, he went for the went for the whole thing and got picked off. Yeah. That's who he is. He he he's he's a, a, a lot of uh, uh, gamble on him, and now it's paying off for him. Now I do think he's sadly because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I have a rooting interest because I like Stefanski. Yeah, I, remember I had I had my crazy hail mary Browns Lions Super sure. Bowl. <laughs> so that's that's live. No, I got lions. Live. I got lions in Cincinnati. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, two months ago, that was dead in the water, man. Yeah. People, both teams look like crap. Uh, but I think Flacco's got a three pick game in him. Uh, you think it's tonight? I don't. I don't think it's tonight. I mean, right? that's a pretty that's a pretty hefty line, by the way. It's seven and a half, and the total is thirty four and a half. It's. Uh, I think it's it's predicated on the you know will the Jets score. Uh, I think it's an overlay. I think the Jets can 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 cover it. I'm not using it, but if I if I absolutely, yeah, I think the have, Jets are going to cover the number too. I just think it's a lot of points this late in the year for for yeah. Oh well, how's what's how are they going to score? Simeon Stink, but uh, okay, uh, it's a lot of points. It's a lot of points for a team that you know does not score right. a, a ton of points. And maybe he will does have the three interception game tonight, and they squeeze, you know, they got to squeeze out a 21 20. Yeah, like a 10 to three jet lead going into halftime. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. People have just been, well, this is the time of year where people start getting buried with all these, with these over, you know, all these overlays, you know. I mean, the Bills are two touchdowns against New England. Uh, after we just watched, you know, I get it, New England's crap, but, you know, they have a decent defense. Yeah. Uh, I think the Bills will win the game. 13 and a half. Then you got Sam Fran who just got absolutely mollywoppled in front of the front of the country. You know, now they're going on the road and playing, you know, they're laying two touchdowns. They're laying two touchdowns in the, on the road. I, I, I mentioned this on Twitter to, to uh, uh, somebody who had uh, – somebody was laying two touchdowns on the road. Who was it last week? I can't remember. Uh, I said, you know – it is a dangerous proposition to lay. Oh, Kansas! Uh, no, Kansas City was well, home. Were, Eagles were what? What was it? Thirteen? What did it close at? They, they were home though. Somebody went on the road. Oh, on the road. Times. I'm sorry. 
whoever it was, in the last three weeks, you had a mixed match and this kind of crap. And, and she said, it's really difficult in this league. Uh, again, back to my original point, you need to be, you need to have that matchup of like just a, the way Kansas City was that first, the first Mahomes first run. You know, you have a team that you're just like, wow, look at this team. They, they yeah. are the Super Bowl team. Yeah. They, they're just a boom, boom, but they're just clicking. Their offense is good. Their defense is, is decent. You know, they, they, they're playing. Uh, remember, it was the year after they had lost the closed overtime game in New England, uh, Kansas City's first run. So, you know, you had an elite team. So, Kansas, that team was playing against like this year's Carolina. And it was in Carolina. I wouldn't back Carolina there. I'd be like, yeah, I don't know part of that game. But uh, again, if you go back, you can go all the way back 40, 45, 50 years. Uh, it is a tough proposition to lay more than more than 10 on the road. And if you look at the teams that covered, that actually got there. So I think it's, uh, again, it's a small sample, but I think it's decent enough to look to say, okay, what's happening here? Who covered? The teams that did not cover were absolute crap. And the teams that did were like Brady's 07 team. You know, the 89 49ers. Yeah. Yeah. It was the Giants in their run with, yeah. whenever he was healthy. Uh, yeah. The Niners, when they were uh, 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 Manning, when they broke the record, when he had yeah. the 900 touch it. And they played at Oakland, they laid 12 and the Rams, the greatest show on Warner. turf. Yep. Warner's team. So you had these. You have to have a team that kind of checks all the boxes and then a team that checks none of the boxes. So your window to win that is so small, but it's so, it's so scary to play a team. Like how are you going to play, you know, the command skins this week <laughs> against San Fran? Yeah. And, but I think you play either them or you don't play the game. Because San Fran, we just saw last week. Uh, now I'm not going to take look too much into that because to me, you asked me who I like to say, like the Ravens. I said it's six is a good number. Uh, turn out to be you need six, you need nothing. But I said it's a good team, a good team, good team. Uh, I, you know, if the Ravens had lost a close game, would it have knocked their status down? No. Uh, does this look bad for the Niners? It probably is. Uh, the, it's similar to when the Bengals went in and beat the Niners. Dog walked them, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, last year, I believe, they played a close game. It was close against Kansas City, and then the wheels flew off. Garoppolo played close. The San Fran was playing tight, and then all of a sudden, Mahomes completed a 50-yard pass, and they got the ball back. It was another 50-yard. All of a sudden, Kansas City won by three touchdowns or something. So, so it, it moved the needle on the MVP race, by the way, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, it, yeah. But this is such an open year, uh, which is why I hated all the narratives with, oh, now it's Purdy. Every week it's somebody different. You know, if right. you listen to all the between all the sports, hey, they throw Josh Allen's name in there. Sherman was making well, a Allen's, Allen's a good bet now because he's like fifteen to one. Yeah. I think it, you 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 come up with this. You, too many people are reactive with this and not proactive. I think it, if you're going to come up with a narrative, Rich, come up with, with what you think the end of the next two and a half weeks will look like. If you say, okay, Buffalo's going to uh, destroy New England. Allen's going to have no turnovers, a rushing TD, 350. Okay, great. Boom. And then he's going to go in Miami and beat Miami, have two touchdowns, have 300 yards, have another rushing touchdown. And then they win the East. Or no, well, they have a game in between them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, the I next three saying. weeks. But January, when they finish up at this January 7th in Miami, you know, now all of a sudden your your scenario just played out. That means yeah. Allen will probably win the MVP. Yeah. Not this thing of like you had two weeks ago, like, oh, Dak's the MVP right now. Well, the MVP vote's not right now. Yeah. And you have four weeks. You have a full we, – we talked about it. I said, I said – I made fun of myself. I said, well, the golf thing is gone. Yep. Because – but I think my head was in the right place because I I had a scenario. I said, listen, here's what could happen. You're getting a, a guy at 40, 42, 45 to 1. And if the Lions can continue to win and golf can continue to be serviceable, not kill the team, and then maybe have one or two good games in there and then – all the votes close, and then they play at Dallas, which would have been this Saturday. 
And then he's got a great game and everybody's watching it. And they're like, oh my gosh, now there's two C. They just beat yeah. Dallas to Dallas. All of a sudden, Goff's there. Now what screwed that whole thing up is they got beat by Green Bay on Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving. And then, yeah, and then they lose on the road against the Bears. Now it wasn't because of Goff, but the team, uh, you know, they kind of fell back. Uh, we talked about it before that there's going to be a little ebb and flow. Now look at what's happened. San Fran has lost. Purdy's now is out. I think Baltimore is going to lose this week. I like Miami in the game. If you can get three and a half, it's three with no joke. You, you can get three and a half minus 15. I think it's a good, it's a good play. Uh, the, if, if that happens, Miami goes there and wins, that most likely means Lamar Jackson didn't play unbelievable. I mean, he still could play unbelievable. Yeah. But it won't matter. If the team loses, all of a sudden people are going to start to look. Now they'll look to Miami. Maybe they'll look at Tyreek again. Uh, maybe they'll look at, at Tua, which, which is to me is crazy. But the this, this scenario in the in the NFC, I also like Detroit this week. I like Detroit plus six. Well, what if Detroit goes in and beats Dallas? And Goff is 30 of 35 for 350 and three touchdowns. All of a sudden, my crazy scenario from before Thanksgiving ha- comes back a little bit. So I think if you have a plan of here's here's the odds I have, here's what I think will happen, that's not that's much better than saying, okay, here's the odds I have. Yeah, uh, uh, right. If, if, if the vote was right now or the other narrative, that's, yeah. that's crazy. The other narrative is crazy is I can't believe such and such is plus one. Well, bet it then. If you don't agree with the line or agree with the odds are, I can't yeah. believe Stefanski's plus 1,500 to win coach of the year. All right, well, bet it. What are you complaining yeah. about? Yeah. Uh, comeback player of the year, I said it for, for three months. I said, you know, Hamlin right now is five to one or something. There's not a shot. I mean, Flacco, funny though. Flacco's four to one. I know. But, but Unless Flacco dies the next three weeks and they bring him back to life, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not, not going to – it doesn't matter if Flacco does. Flacco get a 500 yards. Uh, the, yeah. Oh, well, how about – he didn't play the full year. Yeah. Uh, it's not his fault. Well, sure it is. Maybe he shouldn't play better with the Jets. They're blaming Salah for that. Uh, maybe it is his fault. There's just a lot of things in there. Hammond was going to be – come back no matter what. Uh and I'm still alive for back-to-back comeback if he comes back and plays better next year. And then uh, coach of the year is a little bit more up in the air. But but again, if Campbell wins, if Detroit beats Dallas, right. and they don't even have to beat Dallas. If they lose a close game to Dallas, win their last two, and somehow – I mean, they won the North. If they're the three seed, uh, Campbell's probably still right there. Stefanski could pass him as coach of the year if the Browns, you know, because look what he did, four different quarterbacks. Yeah. So if they crush tonight, they win the next two games, uh, what are they going to be, the five seed? Uh, uh, whatever seed they end up, he's going to get a lot of looks because from all the writers because it's going to be in everyone's head. Oh, my gosh. You know, uh, Look at the Browns and look at the fans. team, and 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 let's not forget they also lost their best running back <laughs> right out of the gate. Chubb got hurt, so yeah. it's he. If you want to play a, a, a dog, that's a good live dog. I think everybody else is going. Remember, they were talking about uh, uh, Domingo Ryan's. I was and about I said, to just no. ask you, and then well, he I said, if, if, if Stroud gets hurt, he, Ryan's is done. And Stroud got hurt. I hate yeah. to put Jets on him, yep. but. uh, I still think Campbell – I don't think Campbell's going to win it now, but I still think Campbell was a good candidate because uh, there was a lot of expectations for the line. The lines are favored to win the North. So what did he really do? But sometimes that's more pressure. So, you know, you're supposed to do this. Lions have been crap for all these years. Here comes Campbell. He takes over a team that's that's horrible. But – you got to remember. Should it be too. a cumulative award? Should it yeah, be like, but, oh, he did go three years? I, I don't know. But you got to remember uh, the division stinks. The Bears are bad. Minnesota is still Minnesota. And then you take Aaron Rodgers out of that division. By default, you know, it, it lined up that it, it, it should have been Detroit's year, right? Or, you know, to win you know, the division. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, but, you know, what do you, what do you want to have happen with some of these coaches? Do, you have, do they have to, do they tra- traditionally, 
if if you get if you do what you're supposed to do, you don't win the, the award. Hey, Cleveland wins the games, award. It's it, it, it's a lot of Dable type guys. It's like, oh my God, we didn't realize you were going to do or Stefanski. So right now, if you wanted to play Stefanski uh, with the idea of saying, you know, they're going to win this, they're going to be the five, so what, blah blah blah, whatever, they're going to be in the playoffs. I think the playoffs, Stefanski is going to win. He's got four quarterbacks, no running back, all that. I get it. Comeback play of the year is done. And then MVP, with the cool part, it's going to be these last three games. Like, if if Tyreek Hill breaks the 2,000, do they, could this happen? Could there be a tie? Co-MVP? I hate co-MVP. They did it in 97, Barry Sanders and Brett Favre. I saw Sanders' tweet, and that was back when, you know, uh, the running backs were given a lot more, a lot more value. Uh, but... I think this year that that narrative has come up and the, and, it's, and the vote, whoever has a vote is listened to. It's like, well, does it have to be a quarterback? Does it have to be a quarterback? Does it have to? So if he ends up with 2,000 yards and there's no clear cut quarterback, you could see, you know, uh, Lamar and Tyreek share it. Or it, it's almost like, you know, I don't like the, the, the split one because it's, it, it's, it's like it, you couldn't decide. So you split the depth. You but you know, the, it's you also like it's, it's isn't this the first year where you actually they tier the vote? Yeah, One, two, three, four, five, or something. I don't know why they didn't tier it before. I don't like the MVP as it is. It's uh, almost uh, like uh, giving an MVP to a losing player on the Super Bowl, right? I mean, it's almost it's like weird. yeah, it was, it's just a. I I thought you you mentioned earlier with the, with the. Uh, we, we talked that the, that Giants year, all fair. We were talking about the, the year the Giants beat the Bills. If you're ever going to give a losing guy the, the MVP, I thought Thurman Thomas should have won the MVP that year. He, because, you know, he was the best player on the, the field. Game. He was the best player. They gave it to OJ Anderson. They had no one else, no one else to give it yeah, to. Yeah, you're not giving it to Hostel or up modest numbers. Yeah, and so it's like it's getting to that point with, with the league. It's like now in a good way, if you preseason-wise next year – Maybe you want to take a couple shots on 25 or 30 to ones because they'll be live. Right. Everyone, every, everyone will be live if they give a co-MVP. Now, I don't know what the rules are. Like. Do you still win? I, I don't even I don't even know if they still win. Who do, I, I mean, I have golf. If golf, if golf has no shot to win, unless the Eagles somehow lose the last game of the year to the Giants. And then Detroit Sam field, yeah. Stan Fran loses to the Rams and the and the Lions sneak into the one seed. How is that gonna? Uh, I mean, oh my gosh! What so that you, you you mentioned you do like the Bills this weekend. Uh, you mentioned you like Green Bay. You did mention you like Detroit getting the five and a half against Dallas. Dallas. Well, I, well, well, I like Bills first half. Bills first half. Bill, is okay. nice. So I, I I have a play in the Bills first half. Uh, I have a play. On Green Bay. Yep. Uh, I like that play. That's a pretty strong play. Yeah, play on Green Bay. Play on Miami. Uh, I have a smaller play on uh, on the Saints. Uh, and, you know, I hate to say get the three or anything as, as, as uh, cliche as that, but – I think the Saints have, have a shot to win the game. Now, it sounds weird because you're like, wait a minute, Saints have not done anything. And uh, Tampa Bay has actually looked great. Yeah. great last week. We know the way this league is week to week. There's so much parity. It's it's scheduling. It's tough to come with your A game every week. And Tampa and the Saints kind of the same. are, are yeah. more evenly matched yep. than anybody would, would, would want to admit. Uh, you know, I looked at the Raiders and Colts. I th actually thought the Colts ran out of steam a couple of weeks ago when everybody started saying, look what they've done. They went five straight. Um, you know, are they going to win the division? I actually had a division flyer, which was something crazy. Like five. I said, oh, look, I'm live. I was like, that, that, that's not going to win. And, uh, you know, they hit, they hit the wall. And then last week I, I had Atlanta. Uh, I liked Atlanta last week. Uh, I think, I, yeah, of course, I mentioned on, on your show, so at, Atlanta won. And, uh, but I think if you're going to take a look at the Raiders, uh, plus three and a half, 
It's not a terrible play. Colts played obviously better at home. Yep. But the Colts, Colts had, uh, the good parts about the Colts is that they score. The bad part is their defense is, isn't any good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As crazy as it is, uh, look, what the, look what the Raiders and Pierce have done. I, I mean, I crapped all over Pierce. Uh, I mean, if this guy wins against the Colts, they might actually give this guy the job, as crazy as that sounds. I, I think I, they are. If not, he's got an, uh, he's going to get a raise and as a coordinator. They're going to give him – But, he, you know, but here's the thing. He's not going to take that step back to be coordinator. He wants to be a head coach. You need to surround him with a pretty good coaching staff. I think they're going to, they're going to rip off the interim tag. You know, everyone always says you've earned it. You've earned it. You've earned it. He's got to win this week. If he wins this week, if they close out, I mean, they beat Kansas city, you might think like what you're saying, Oh, it's done. Lock it up. City on the road. Uh, The game that they lost against the Vikings did not help. There's no moral victories, but that's a moral victory. You know, they didn't, they played tough in a game in that game. It was one or two put and you lose three nothing. It's but just, then they come back and score six three. And three. <laughs> and it's right. They killed the Chargers. But I mean the three nothing game, meaning that your that your your defense played great. Uh, you know, you and then you came back, you absolutely demolished the Chargers. You win against KC on the road. If they beat, they win another game on the road. Uh wow, it's gonna be well, they got uh, Denver to close the season too. So even if they beat the Colts and beat Denver. That's, that's what I think will happen. Honestly, it seems cheesy to say, but I think it's going to happen is they're probably going to lose to the Colts and probably beat Denver. And now you're in between. If you're the ownership, Nine, yep. if you're Mark Davis, you're like, okay, what do we do? But if he, if he sweeps in the end, he, he's going to be the coach. Uh, because I think Harbaugh is going to go to San Diego. I don't think Belichick is going to go to San Diego. I, 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 I just, it's just a gut. I'm just saying it. I don't have any knowledge to it. I think uh, my opinion is as good or better than anybody else's. I just don't think uh, – I think it's going to go back to what we said in October. If if Belichick leaves, there's new – all the, the new ownership with the deep pockets in Washington, uh, which is weird. You know, the national media is not really on this. They're kind of saying – Oh, the, does Rivera lose his job? Rivera knew he was going to lose his job two years ago when he was going through cancer treatment. That's why he doesn't care. I, I don't say he doesn't care, but that's why he's kind of – he's been going through the motions. And, he's, almost, he's almost at peace with the fact that I'm going to be out of a job. And also, you know, in fairness to Rivera, I mean, he's not, he's not a great coach no. anyway. But in fairness to him, he had the worst owner in sports, maybe in sports history. I mean, so you want to go something back to, to be Ted, said. You want to go back to Ted Stepien with the Cavs, I get. Or, or yeah. I don't know how far back you want to go, but Snyder's the worst coach in sports history since of my lifetime, and this guy had to coach during that. You know, I uh, deal with the bullshit. So it's almost like they didn't fire him. I think out of respect for saying, you know, internally, like, listen, Rob, we're going to pay you. your whole contract, everything, and. uh, you know, end of the year we'll reevaluate, but you know it's going to end of the year. Everyone's gone. Uh, I think I thought at first the enemy was going to get the job, but now with the new ownership, he's not going to get the watch, but he's going to get a job. I just don't know whose job it's going to yeah. be. Uh, he already makes a ton as the coordinator. Uh, the but rumors it hasn't, that- helped. it hasn't helped though. Not to cut you off, it hasn't helped in the beginning of the year. Offensively, everyone was looking at Sam Howe. Now they turn around, they bench the kids. So you have to take the good with the bad, right? The thought was. Sure. I mean, he's had flashes, you know, yeah. where we had, they, they said, look how, you know, look how great the enemy is. Look how bad the enemy The players complain. The enemy's been in the league enough. He's had Mahomes. He hasn't, uh, I think it was ballsy to go to Washington of all places. And and when, it, when all said and done, you're going to look at all the, the cumulative numbers of, of the quarterbacks and it'd be a, it's going to be enough where he's going to get a job. Yeah. Yeah. I had coaching a job somewhere. I just don't think it's going to be Washington because I think what's going to happen in Washington is I think they're going to hire Bill Belichick. I, I, and I it just makes make sense. Point. We were on it. We were on it. Really, I thought everybody would be on this, I, I but I heard, you know, you had, you know, guys that have been around this league, uh, 40, 50 years who covered this league from Peter King 
to uh, Ira, what's his name? Who's down in, who's in Tampa knows the Glazers knows that, you know, knows the is, you know, they talk to these guys. I don't talk to you talk to pros. I don't talk to these pros. So for me to be ahead of these guys, either they're, either they have a blind spot or I'm completely wrong. I could right. Or wrong. they know something I, we don't know. But it just makes sense. They, if I was the ownership and I noticed that, you know, uh, they were going to get rid of what what is arguably the best coach in, in, in history. I think he's the best defensive coach in history. Uh, and now you get a chance to bring him in and break the record there because you, you want to make a splash. Right. I hear the, the narrative you, you hear is all oh, the Chargers want to make a splash in L.A. You know, but no one's making a splash in L.A. Unless Brady comes back and plays in, in L.A. And that's not going to have his Herbert here. So who are you going to hire? And no, There's no hire. Uh, now watch they, they go the out. Chargers, they, hire they, will care. They, they hire Belichick. And then when Russell Wilson gets cut, they get him on the cheap. But, but Another maybe, bridge quarterback. Maybe, maybe maybe they get a bridge, maybe, but you know, Washington is going to get a, a good pick. Uh, do they have? An, do they bring in Russell Wilson as the bridge guy, to, and then they and then they, they grab, uh, you know, one of the one of the top Drake May or one of these guys. They're number three coming. right. They're number three right now in Tankathon. They're going to get, yeah, yeah, get a good quarterback. They they already have. Um, they have some they got, they yeah, got some. So they they and with the way the league is. They're not. They're not horrible. They're not a horrible team. You've seen that they, that they can they compete. They lost the game in Seattle that they had wrapped up. Yeah. It wasn't for their defense. So, uh, so that leads to you know, can they cover this week's game, Washington? I think they can. It's going to be ballsy to play plus thirteen and a half against San Fran. I think a lot of the national narrative, you know, San Fran's going to come back and crush, and they may. And um. That's a lot. Of, that's you're laying a lot of points, man. I would I would lean towards Washington. Which just I I, I yeah. think I think that, that they can uh, look at look how they came back against the Jets. I mean yeah. that's that's only to lose it late. <laughs> that goes back to what we spoke we spoke about before when you're like, oh, this team is quick and that team is quick. A lot of these guys. Are not only playing for a job on that team, they're playing for a job in the league. Yeah, because you know these other teams, they're, they, they're they're gonna look at the film like, how did they play when they're? That's teams... why I never bought into tanking. I never it's subscribed not, to not, tanking in the NFL. Yeah, it's not that the NFL put every once in a while you'll see a veteran guy make a business do, decision, do, do the old life. Thing. But a lot of these guys they pull up lame. They they have weird injuries like you know you'll have the ankle. My hamstring. Remember, Darrell Reeves was famous for that crap when the, the team. Norris Jenkins out. with the Giants, man. Same thing. So they're not even on the field, and it makes sense. If me and you were coaching, I want that that rookie guy off the practice. That guy's going in there to kill somebody. They don't care that we're out yeah. of the playoffs. So that's and you saw it with with with. I'm almost calling them Redskins. <laughs> the you see with the Commanders. I thought it was phenomenal how they how they came back. Also, for the reason that you know, I had the commanders. Yeah. <laughs> I had remember I had the commanders in the game. I was like, "Oh, I'm done with this game." And, uh, they came storm back only to lose. But the, how they lost again? That's kind of a moral victory. You lost to a 54 yard field goal with a kicker that's been the best player on the Jets. Holy <laughs> smoke! I think I sent a tweet out. I said, the Jets lose this game. I'm maybe I'm wrong. Belichick might end up in in, in New York. Now they said Woody Johnson hates Belichick, and I get it. But like, I so told I, you this a couple weeks ago. I said, wouldn't it be something? And by the way, that's when he gave, he turned around and he gave Douglas and Salah a vote of confidence. Imagine giving a vote of confidence. And then three hours later, you're about to blow a 20 point lead at home to a bad team. I mean, I still believe as much as Belichick can't stay in the Jets, there's, there's a part of him that probably wants to stick it to the Patriots. For a couple years and how can you do that you stay in the afc you stay in the division i know it sounds crazy i i, 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 I think it would be the, it's it's the it's a, the best place for him to go to win right away because you, plus it's, it would be a great story you know now he's getting rogers and a defense i mean what are you kidding me if he doesn't win 12 games in the division and all 
Holy, I mean, you can't. And then Rodgers will have no excuse. No. So, so it would be a huge, huge serve. But remember, we mentioned this before, oh. even with Rodgers, the, uh, the, the, the season total for the Jets was still right around nine and a half. Nine, so nine they, were, they weren't predicted uh, in, in the market to be, you know, super elite. They yeah. were they were predicted to be a playoff team. Will they win ten games? Maybe. So, you know, if they end up with six wins because of Rodgers, that's why Salah got the vote of confidence because he's going to get next year. I just want to know what the narrative is going to be next year when they're you know six and five and Rodgers starts pointing fingers at people it's or, or, baby. or or if they're four and five. I just think as Rodgers gotten older. Uh, he's kind of a cancer, I and mean, everybody's uh, uh, he's he's just making things a little bit worse. But now the thing where he took the roster spot, he's not coming back. It, it's all about him, but he's putting all the pressure on, on himself. Uh, and he got bailed out, by the way, mouthing off saying he was going to come back. Right now, it's well, they really didn't. Um, they didn't want to release me. They didn't want to give me the green light. I mean, there was no way he was coming back. He manipulated and toyed with the friggin'. You almost feel bad for the fan base, um, you know, but um, it is what it is on a, a Thursday edition of BYP. The prof kind enough to join us. All right. So and uh, from our good friends over at Played Again Sports as well. Um, I, I do want to get your thoughts. I We hit on a, a lot of these games, which is good. Did, did any thought on Cincinnati and Kansas City and the Chargers and Denver now with Denver making the quarterback switch? Uh. Well, it seems like the national uh, narrative about Denver is there's not that much of a difference between Wills the change and the change in quarterbacks. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of, kind of a, a little bit of a guessing game. Uh, you know, it was it was Wilson the reason they were winning? I think it's the reason that that you touched on a few weeks ago when they beat Buffalo in Buffalo. They should have won that game by two touchdowns. They were inside the 50. And to me, the, it, it, even though the Broncos won, it looked bad. To me, the numbers, it made them look worse. Yep. And it made me feel optimistic about Buffalo. Uh, if I was coaching the Bills at that time, I'd say, listen, let's put this behind us. This was a complete anomaly. Yep, 100%. We, we lost this game. Let's go out and win the rest of it. And maybe that's what was said because they played great against the Eagles. Uh, outside of a couple, you know, they had a lot of bad yeah. things happen that were, they, you know, and then they, you know, we're, we're look where the Bills are now. They're in a position now where they can actually win the division. Uh, Broncos' reason for winning was they were plus like thirteen in turnovers. You know, other yeah. teams were giving them the games. They were uh, 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 the Bills. I mean, Allen had two bad picks in that game. Russell Wilson didn't even crack two hundred yards in that game. Now Wilson played well against Cleveland. They yeah. home game against Cleveland. I had Cleveland that game. They 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 just they they came out and just ran right over uh, Cleveland. And that game was even close. Uh, so go back to the original thing. You know, is it that I, I, if I had to play a side, I, I I would play the Chargers. It's going to be a game time decision for me. Simply because I have a situation where I don't think Denver is any good either. I knew right. the Chargers were any good. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of people in the national media say, oh, well, this guy's not playing for the Chargers. This guy's not playing for the Chargers. Okay, well, you don't know who the backup is. You know, uh, well, the back, he'd be playing if he was good. Well, not necessarily. You know, I mean, Eckler's fumble, I think, has changed the entire Chargers season. He fumbled inside the five in Green Bay. They beat Green Bay. It's a you know it would have been a different thing. Yeah, you know, of course Herbert got hurt, but sure. it might have been a little bit different. I don't. I hate to focus on one play, but it, it matters in people's. But it head. does in the NFL. It you does. know, you're like, wow, we had this game and we lost, but whatever, whatever, however you're gonna you're gonna play. Remember, they played well against the Ravens. Hey, but the but think about this, right? I I, I hate play to, I hate to bring up the Giants because they're bad, but again. Washington on the road, 0-2, 2007. They had a goal line stand, fourth down play. It changed the complexion of their season, right? So oh, to your point with the Chargers. The players start getting together with it, and they start seeing the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. To say, okay, uh, it, 
the, the season's long, but if you can see the next three games, I think it, 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 it's a good, bo- a good boxing uh, yeah. analogy. As you know, back when there were 15 rounds, there's a lot of dead seven, eight, nine rounds, you know, because you fought well. Okay. Down well, a little bit, then you, you know, yep. well, you know, I don't want, I don't want to be, have nothing. Right. For, for, for the, 12, for the 13, championship round. So, you know, they, they, they have that def- teams definitely uh, cumulatively pace themselves. So to, it's a long winded way to answer. I, I, I like, I like the Chargers in the game, but I, I I don't like I like other games more. So there's no real reason for me to me to play the uh, the Chargers. Uh, but if I had to, I don't like Denver in the game. And there's something else. You know, we mentioned the Bears. I don't think the Bears are are that bad. Their numbers uh, laying five at home. Defensive numbers. Well, actually, it's three. I'm sorry, three. Pardon me. Yeah, sorry. it's three pardon against me. Atlanta. I think it's a short number. I think. Fields is playing better. I think I'm in the minority. I think the Bears should keep Fields, and you don't have to overly. You don't have to give him Russell Wilson money. I think, I think he'll take. You know, I hate to say 100 million is is not a lot of money, but I think you can get away with Fields instead of reaching for one of these four guys because I think their defense is decent. Uh, they have decent receivers. I think you can maybe go for maybe line. You, you, you could build a little bit around fields and then see where the next two or three years goes. I could be wrong. I, that's just something I would do. Uh, I think the Bears coach is going to keep his job. Yep. Uh, the line is basically uh, – you know, it, it, three is such a cheesy out for the market, you know. <laughs> What's the line? Three, you know, and then nobody knows which way to uh, uh, It's a game time probably thing. I I could see it, it going more to the Bears. Uh, I think it'll be a close game. It, it's kind of a cop out, but I, I, I don't like the game. You mentioned the Cincinnati game. Kansas City, could you be more of a – it's like the whole team is Aaron Rodgers now. Everybody's crying. Kelsey's throwing his, his helmet. He complained. What was that thing three weeks ago? He's been thinking about retirement uh, because of the injuries. He, you know, he hasn't been, uh, you know, drastically hurt, but, you know, they're starting to build up. Sure. The soreness here, he's got a lot of drops. Uh, I don't know if he's on the same page with Mahomes. Mahomes, hate, you know, his receivers. How many drops do the receivers have? They lead the league in drops. You have the, the, the mess with Tony, who, you know, as a team, I thought it was good that they focused on everything but Tony, you know, but they know it, this was Tony's and the Giants, mistake. That's why they got rid of him. <laughs> and this isn't the first. Yeah, everybody knows Tony's kind of a crazy person. Uh, he just doesn't pay attention. He's got a lot of talent. Uh, do you blame the coaches? I, I don't know. I, I knew this, you know, when you have Mahomes, anything's possible. Uh, but I do remember what Tampa did to him in that Super Bowl. Harassed him. It wasn't it wasn't his fault that he didn't have the line, but they were there was kind of a, a, a thing. Here's what you can force him, him to do. Uh it, almost like years ago, Brett Favre. Brett Favre was so hard to prepare for because he could throw three interceptions and he could, you know, thread the needle when, you know, and, yeah. or, or scram or throw a screen pass. To, improvise. To that. That into, you can improvise. It's just like it forces you as a team to say, you know what, this is what we're going to do and let the chips fall where they may. And Oakland did that. Oakland did that. The Raiders did that. <laughs> and look what happened. He couldn't find anybody open. Uh He's running around like crazy. That's the best thing to do is to make him run around like a lunatic. He might have one so player to get 80 yards throw. on him, but he's going to have a bunch of – and I think – see, Cincinnati's defense is, isn't that good, so it worries me that they can get, you know, in the seven. I don't like Cincinnati's coach. I don't want – but seven's a lot. And uh, 
Kansas City is probably going to be a decent teaser player. They're probably going to win the game. Uh, are they going to cover? I, I don't. I, I don't like. I don't like any of these big favorites late, but I do like Kansas City and the teaser. Like actually, if you want to play Browns, Kansas City, it's probably uh, the best teaser scenario I can think of outside of Green Bay. Green Bay, I've already played in teasers plus eight and a half, which is not going to be there. If you can get seven and a half. It's, it's just as good. Uh, but we talked about flexing that game. Uh, uh, do you want to see that game? I, I don't know. I think there's more of a worry that that game could end up being a blowout. I'd rather see Miami and Baltimore flex, but. Uh, Miami and Baltimore is going to be, gonna be a, a, a great game. Uh, I think the game of the week is, could end up being Tampa and the Saints. We, uh, we don't have much time left, I know, but, you know, Baker Mayfield has been. Baker Mayfield was 6'3", being one of the best players in the league. Hey, good for yeah, him, he's, man. He's a gamer. He's kept games alive. If people actually watch their games. He's, he's, a kept, gamer. he's kept things alive simply by not refusing to get sacked. Mm. Like, I think he's going to get hurt. Like, he's going to break something at some point. But he's just – he's such a scrapper. He's a scrappy – it's weird to – He's a gamer. Scrappy. He was the first pick overall. The first yeah. pick overall is supposed to be, you know, super elite guy. He's probably a reach by the Browns. But he is – he's good. Now, they're going to give him a big contract. I don't know, but he he's a starter in this league. And Tampa Bay's probably going to keep him. And maybe it's a, it's a kind of a – Justin Field is kind of thing. A two year deal. Yeah. You pay him something, try to build a little bit around him, have a defense. Does that win for you? It, it, it may. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, just real quick about the, the yes. bowl. Yes. Uh, the bowl charity. Uh, every big game I, I, I used one and one uh, convincingly, like Northern Illinois and some of these crap games that weren't a lot of, weren't a lot of uh, name players. They either worry about opt outs or or a lot of money uh, floating in on uh, Northern Illinois, University of Ohio, uh, Air Force. Air Force actually the line adjusted. They went from plus three to basically minus two and a half juice, almost minus three. They won't go away. It's back to back years that I've had Air Force in a game where the line moved mm. four or five points. Uh, and it could be just a coincidence, but it would, or it could just you know coincidence based on you know the opponent. I thought the Air Force was the, was the better team. I was getting questions like, "Hey, can, should I play at minus two? I'm like, "Well, it's it's not a strong a play." And Air Force uh, won, you know, convincingly. Uh, the hard part is, you know, like I like Georgia, uh, it, it, but I I uh, did not give it out. Uh, right away because I wanted to be I wanted to get closer to the game to yeah. see who exactly was opting out and who wasn't going to opt in, uh, thinking you know it could hurt Georgia. Well, it hurt Georgia. If you, it didn't hurt me because I played Georgia for a little bit. And it hurt me. Now. The line's nineteen now. You know, no one's playing for Florida State. Is it? I mean, it's ridiculous how how high the line they could as soon as they increase the limits at at you know places like. Uh, Circa and, and some bigger offshores like like Penny, you know they they just hammered Georgia and went from thirteen to fifteen to sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, wow. nineteen. So like you know how do I get how do you how do you get that and that's and that's part of the challenge. You can't now. justify that. Pit, You're doing yeah. this kind of thing, you can't do that. And you don't want to have happen the opposite, which made me nervous. Which was uh, I found out later it was a big service play on Marshall. Somebody popular gave that Marshall. Now I, I, Marshall. Uh, I was on the other side and I, I, I had, and I laid, I was willing to lay 10, 11, 12. And, and, and Marshall to me was one of the worst teams in the bowl set up. The worst team was the team South Alabama. Eastern Michigan was the worst bowl team. Um, the, uh, and they got killed. South Alabama beat him by like 500. So the Marshall line goes all the way down to seven. So people are like, I oh, should we play it again. I'm like, really, you should. But I said, just keep it the way it is. And Marshall didn't even show up. Uh, so as we look to the next few games, I like Penn State. I gave Penn State, I was three and a half. Penn State money line at one point was 175. I like Penn State on the money line. It's up to 195. It's a little high. I still think it's playable. Uh, are you gonna, do you play 
Penn State at four and a half, and it could close at five. This is simply a play, a matchup. Uh, we know Penn State's problems are. Mississippi, uh, uh, they score like crazy, but I think Penn State, Penn, the good things about Penn State, Penn State's got a, got a, a, a top, to me, top tier defense for, for, and I think when you get uh, some of these in between teams that just know how to score, it, 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 traditionally the defenses come through. They don't know how to play against it. They would say, oh, well, they played against Alabama. Alabama's a decent defense. They're not, they're not Penn State. They're not Michigan. It's also why I think Michigan is going to beat Alabama. Uh, pe people are twisting the narrative. Oh, Michigan can't. Can't really move the ball and blah, blah, blah. Listen, Harbaugh wants to play a 13-10 game. He of can't course. wait to play that game. He, he's open 13-3. And it it very well uh, could happen that way. The, the other difficult games for me is like today's game. It poured rain in the bowl game, whatever the bowl game is, uh, uh, SMU, Boston. Poor rain, slush. SMU's been an elite uh Really good defense, elite offense. You put them against a dog poop team like BC, they should absolutely kill them. So going numbers and numbers, I had uh, SMU as like a 15-point favorite of them. The weather, mate, you know, squeezes it down. They were down 3 nothing. It was 14-10. You know, it makes it more difficult. I have a similar problem coming up with uh, LSU. LSU's playing uh, – uh, Iowa, or is it Tennessee playing Iowa? They're the same team. LSU's playing Wisconsin. Oh, Tennessee, yeah, they're laying 10. Tennessee yeah. Iowa's the better team. So, yeah, the LSU gets Wisconsin. LSU is two touchdowns better, at least, than Wisconsin. Tennessee, Iowa's a little bit trickier because Iowa has, a, has a better, a little bit better defense. Iowa can't score. Wisconsin's terrible on both sides. They're like, they're, you know, they. They play Big Ten defense, but it's not, you know, elite like Penn State. Iowa's is very good. Uh, they could give Tennessee some problems. Tennessee went from being seven to ten. Now it's down to six. Again, you don't know who the opt-outs are. So I, I I passed that game. I played LSU. Weird thing about LSU, went, it went, it opened like seven. It was eight and a half. It went to 11, 12. Went to eight and a half. I bet it again at eight and a half. It's currently at 10. It could get unlucky where somebody might not play and the line goes to six. At this point, I don't give a shit. I think they LSU could win with the third string. Every knows Danos is playing. Right. But they score Wisconsin. That could you get unlucky and you know at 31 point? Yeah, you could. It's a it's a play, but it's not an un unbelievable play. Uh, you know, strong play for me. I, I, I like the Penn State uh, play better. And I do like Toledo. Uh, late, they play Wyoming. Uh, it, it, you have to wait until the, the, act, the day of the game to make sure everybody's playing. Yep. But as it stands right now, all things being equal, Wyoming's a three-and-a-half point favorite. I have Toledo as a, as a slightly better team, and they're getting three-and-a-half. It's kind of was my rationale with Northern Illinois – I had Ohio getting four and a half. It's kind of the same rationale. Traditionally, those smaller mid-major team matchups, if everybody plays, uh, uh, if I have what I use to decide who's the better team, that, that, that it's been pretty well. Now, I, I don't like that I got three three of them because if I had three and one with the bigger plays, it's still good, but you hate to have the – happened one year I was like nine and one my last game of the year got killed. And that's all I really remember. I was given – I shared the place. You're like, oh, my God, I wish Iowa had won. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I was nine and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're only talking game, about the one game. Your, your last game, well, it's it's like the end of the week. You don't want to yeah. lose that game. And and, and that's all I really remembered. And I think I was getting seven and team lost like 42 six or something like that. So it was never even in the game. It was embarrassing. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I was, hey, what about the rest of it? But that, it's tough. This is why it's tough to share games or to give games. I don't know how taps do it because you could go six and three and you had a Sunday night game that loses. You're like, yeah, hey, I was six and four for a week. Yeah, I, I need you to be seven and three, whatever. So, uh, but 
you know, the people that got the game, you know, as of right now, they're they're up. It's being po- I'd have yeah. to like lose them. I have to go like out in seven for us to lose that money. But this is why I also threw the NFL plays in too. Uh, but overall, it was good. Uh, I bought a bunch of stuff for uh, uh, a team banquet, and I've yet to buy some more things. I'm going to search for the best price for. Uh, I was speaking to some of the coaches to find out exactly what they need, but it, uh, it, it, it all worked out. Uh, and that, that's that. Do you like anything in bowls? Are you, were you interested? It's been a crazy, it's the bowl season isn't what, isn't what it nah, was. But it's, I never, too, it's too many. I never liked the 10 games on New Year's day. I always thought they could, it should have been, awesome. te- should have been broken up a little bit because it was just so much. It was, you know, it, it was like, I don't want to say it was overkill, but it was like, yeah. oh my god, you know, it, 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 there's games every minute. There's and a game, that's, and that's yeah, you can't keep up. I mean, you can. After a while, I'm just like, you know what? I'll flip them all. Let me go to Netflix. <laughs> you know, I got the NFL. <laughs> you know what? I haven't watched that a lot. But yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, the app that apps don't don't help. I remember the, the last year. I remember where there was every game in one day. And I remember the games, which because the losses fly in and the wins fly in so quickly. And God forbid, even a fourth quarter had changed. And I remember Breeze played in a, in a bowl game against Georgia, and they were up big early. And I remember I had Purdue. And I remember I was like, oh, this, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I think I was getting some points yeah. from Georgia. And, and you can go back and look it up. And anyways, listen, go back. I'm not even going to Google look it up. I'm going to say they were up three touchdowns. I remember wow. thinking, oh, that's over. Let's move to the other games. And I think, I think God, thank God, Wisconsin, I think it was Wisconsin and Ryan Dane won late. Right. And that game. Right of Berlin. So I remember thinking, oh, I had a good day. Yeah. Because because it's New Year's. You know, we're a little bit younger. I'm out. I'm on brunch. I'm, you know, yeah, drinking yeah. and hanging out. I'm going, I go to the bar and go, what the, what, what, what the hell happened? <laughs> Because, because you know, there's no replay. Right. I had to wait until like one in the morning to have the guys go over on ESPN go over the how Purdue, like the wheels flew off, and Georgia came back and won. Uh, they, I think they scored like five, I don't know something crazy. It yeah. breezes last year, so if you, if you look at the game, you'll know that I I, I got killed that game, whatever it was. Uh, so that's that. So uh, have right, a good so new year. You too, brother. So don't forget, everyone, follow the prop on X at Professor Shine. He's giving out the picks. He's doing the charity tout as well. Uh, really did a good job with the NFL. We got the playoffs right around the corner, as always, or a Thursday edition of BYP from our wonderful friends over at Played Against Sports. As I mentioned, too, with the new year right around the corner, you stop in right now, Played Against Sports, Deford, slightly used sports equipment, baseball, hockey, football, lacrosse, Goff, even the free weights, dumbbells, they'll give you cash and through January, 30% more in store credit. Tell me you heard it right here, BYP with Q. All right, Prop, uh, the best of luck with the NFL, the bowl games. We will do it again next week. Appreciate a couple moments, pal. Luck.